Hello everybody, it's me again. I decided to do another video because it's making me more comfortable with them and I think it's kind of fun. Um, so I printed out our story, The Crack Cocaine Diet by Laura Lippman. I kind of wish I'd done with this with the stone mattress because it really helped to highlight the plot points and number them. Um, of course, we weren't looking at pacing then, but it really helps me with the pacing on this one. So I'm just going to go through the plot points real quick. I ended up having 40 and I'll tell you about the pages when we go. So first, um, it starts with how um, Molly and her boyfriend and Kelly and her boyfriend had just broken up and they're going to go to a party and see them so they want to look hot in dresses so they want to go on some sort of crash diet. And uh, on the second page, they decide that the way that they're going to do that is by doing coke. Um, so in the first couple pages, there's only a couple plot points. On the next page, uh, Molly calls a guy who calls a guy who calls a guy and they end up finding it. Um, and they go there, so there's only a couple plot points on this page. And um, so then they go and buy it. They drove up to one guy and then to the next, and they got handed the package and drove away. So, like, plot points are kind of building up about two a page, but not too quickly. And then um, on this page, they think that they've been robbed. So they end up going back. This has a few more plot points on it. Um, one of the most important ones, it was number nine, is this was my first inkling that things might go a little wrong. So she does some foreshadowing there. And since plot point number nine in the foreshadowing, things start to go a lot quicker. Um, so when they go back, she, they're told that they bought heroin, not coke, and that if they just go hand the package back, that he'll get them the right kind. So they get that, still doesn't seem right. Um, so then Molly jumps out of the car and starts running towards the guy. And after some exposition, he says that they'll go to his place. It's another plot point. We're at 13 now. And then we meet Grandma, who's blind, in the house. Um, and Kelly kind of starts to like Antone, too. You can see that, but Antone is into Molly. Um, she notices that he took the pipe from Molly's mouth and replaced it with his lips. So obviously, even though she's kind of into him, he's into Molly. Um, so then she sits down next to Grandma, which I think is a hilarious plot point because she starts stealing potato chips from the old lady's tray without her knowing it. Um, and Anton tells his grandma he's going to go lie down and that the guests are gone. So then, you know, she starts hearing things going on in the bedroom. And then an important plot point here at 22, which is almost right in the middle of the plot points, although not in the middle of the story, it stops suddenly. So then Molly calls to Kelly and says, can you come here for a minute? And Kelly notices when she goes in that there's a pair of scissors stuck in the middle of Anton's beautiful back. And then Molly tries to say that he tried to rape her, even though a lot of the, you know, evidence doesn't add up to that. Um, so now we're on to plot points 27 through 32, which all happen on this one page, for me anyways. Um, you know, Molly says that we don't have to tell anybody. Um, you know, more things happen that show that she wasn't raped. Um, Kelly helps her clean it up, flushes the condom, jacks the money, um, takes more plate or chips off the plate of grandma, which is hilarious, um, and realizes that they're in serious trouble. They leave quickly, and even still on this page, she tells Molly to take the query road home, which is longer, and tells you know Molly that they know the ins and outs of it. And then, again, another plot point, she tells her to stop because she has to pee. And that's a very important plot point, it's number 32. And then 33 is where she kills her on the side of the road. All of a sudden, she just pushes her friend off the query. And then shortly after reveals to us that she did the same thing to one of her ex-boyfriends <clears throat> when he broke up with her. <clears throat> and then um, talks a little bit about how Molly turned out to be pregnant and is now on the front page of the news because she was pushed off the query pregnant and now it's, you know, a revenge type of thing. And lastly, that Molly was sleeping with Kelly's ex-boyfriend, which is probably the reason she pushed her, or maybe to get out of the whole mess with the murder and all that. Um, and lastly, oh, I'm sorry, there's only 37, but still 40. Um, 
that she has a new boyfriend, Robert, and that $2,000 in cash that they stole from Antone really came in handy for her. So it was really cool to go through the <clears throat> plot points and kind of figure out the pacing of the story based on that. I've never done that before, and I think that would help, you know, even in my own writing, if I were to go through and, you know, even the short story that you guys are workshopping for me this week, I think it'd be interesting to go and see how my pacing is from the plot points. Um, but how it worked in this one is it started out at about one or two per page, um, and then things started to speed up a lot towards the end. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like a thriller sort of story where, you know, you start out with a lot of like background and things of that, and then things start going quick domino style near the end. Um, I think it serves the story well, and it serves the type of the story well. Um, I do think that it was a little bit abrupt <clears throat> that she helps you know, Molly clean up after the incident and then pushes her off the query. I wasn't expecting that, and that's probably the point, but it also seemed a little bit unbelievable. I don't know what you guys thought. I'd be interested to know what you guys thought. Um, now, well, what's really interesting is what happens in between plot developments in this one, and I think <clears throat> that it definitely slows the pacing down, especially in the beginning, but it's important because what it is is a lot of Kelly just going off on tangents like any girl would do if they were just sitting there telling you a story. Like, you know, just random little things in the middle. I'm trying to find one. That have nothing to do with, you know, anything that's going on. Like Molly bought a pound of peanut M&Ms and let me tell you the girl was not overachieving. I'd seen her eat that much on many an occasion. Molly has big appetites. We had a picnic right there in the parking lot washing down our food with diet cream soda. So, like, she'll do that a lot where she'll be talking about one thing and then she'll go back in, you know, time or just, like, tell a little anecdote about her or Molly or their relationship or their ex-boyfriends or whatever. So it's pretty cool because it brings you into, you know, the story and, like, makes you get to know Kelly specifically. So by the end, it's actually pretty shocking when she kills her because you kind of think she's just a dumb girl who's not really paying attention, you know, to much that's going on. I mean, she's stealing potato chips off the plate of an elderly blind woman. So, you know, they talk about Star Wars, they talk about HBO. There's a lot in the middle of the plot points that get, lets you know the characters, or so you think. Um, and even though they don't directly affect the plot, I think that they aid in the development of Persona for both Kelly and Molly, more for Kelly because it's what she actually thinks, um, less for Molly because it's what Kelly thinks of her, and obviously she has a, kind of a tainted view of her since, you know, she's planning on killing her, at least you would think so, since she found out she was sleeping with her boyfriend. Um, and lastly, what can we learn from this story? Um, I thought the story was interesting. I really liked the whole, like... I don't know, maybe the voice, kind of the style of it, and how Kelly was like, you know, they broke up with us, and here's the pros and the cons, and Molly's fat, and she can't wear these nice dresses, you know, just like how she would talk about like personal stuff and really like bring you in, and I liked that. Um, I think the pacing is in something interesting that I would do if I, well, actually, it's kind of funny because my story this week that you guys are workshopping this week is kind of like this story. So the pacing is something I definitely could learn, but I kind of feel like the pacing in it is too fast, and I sort of feel like that about my story, too. Um, I feel like it goes quickly from, you know, having a party to killing somebody, and this one goes quickly from a crack cocaine diet to killing a best friend that was, it was shocking. It wasn't, I guess mine led up to her killing her friend because she stole her boyfriend which is kind of I guess the same thing in this one but you don't actually see it so it was a little more shocking but I think that I can learn a little bit from the pace of this um in maybe adjusting mine to tell more as I kind of wish that I had had with this one but then again I think that it was also supposed to be a shock factor and then at the end we were supposed to by now after she does it but it's not just because of Antone it's because of her ex and all that kind of stuff. So it's interesting. I think a couple more reads and I probably find a lot more in it. There's a lot of humor in it that I like. I really like the voice and the style and the persona of Kelly specifically. So 
Hope you guys enjoyed the crack cocaine diet. Hope you're enjoying my story this week. I look forward to all your feedback on that and on this video and discussing more about all of that. Thanks, guys. Bye.